I'm about to reveal the top 10 areas for investing in property in the United Kingdom. I previously on my YouTube channel did the worst areas not to invest. I'll leave a link in the description where you can see that video, but this is the top 10 best areas. And I'm starting with number 10, which is Birmingham. I'm a little bit biased because Birmingham was my very first investment patch where I built up a lot of my HMOs. But I think Birmingham is really good because the demand for tenants is super high. I bought my first house in 2009 for 100 grand. It's now worth about probably just shy of 300 grand. And even today, you can still get pretty decent yields around the outskirts of Birmingham city centre. So Birmingham is number 10. I get jealous seeing my students invested in Newcastle. It's a bit like Birmingham, but the yields are better. You can buy properties cheaper in Newcastle and you can rent them out for not particularly less than even in Birmingham. There is some Article 4 in Newcastle, but on the outskirts, you can do uh, really good things with HMOs, buy to let. According to the Office of National Statistics, the average house price in Newcastle right now is just £194,000. Next up in place eight is Hertfordshire. The average price for a house in Hertfordshire is over half a million pounds, according to Zoopla and Rightmove. But in Hertfordshire, there's a lot of properties that are run down that you can significantly increase the price. So if you're looking to do a house flip or if you're looking to do service accommodation. Next up, number seven is the Peak District. Now the Peak District is a beautiful area surrounded by hills, mountains, scenery, and lots and lots of sheep. If you play your cards right, the holiday let market in the Peak District is booming. Whilst there are mad opportunities, you can do things like buy little rundown animal barns and farms and then renovate them and turn them into luxury holiday lets. And you can make really, really, really good profits and good returns. But it helps if you know the council, if you've got a good team in the area. I wouldn't suggest just going in buying blind without knowing the area. But Peak District, it's worked for me. It's a great area. It's absolutely beautiful and it's definitely a solid seven. Next up, number six, is Brighton. The way to do Brighton is you need to try and crack the serviced accommodation market. People will pay £150 a night for a, a studio apartment, which is four and a half grand a month. Average house price in Brighton is £420,000. Pretty expensive, but the average rent is £2,500. And that's just for a three-bed semi-detached property, according to Zoopla. Another thing you can do in Brighton is rent to rent. So you can rent an apartment for say a thousand pounds, but with the landlord's consent and with the right contract, you can then rent it out as serviced accommodation and charge by the night. And that's a really good way to make a thousand or even two thousand pounds a month cash flow from just one property that you don't even own. Number five is good old Manchester. The average house price in Manchester right now from the Office for National Statistics was £243,000. So rents have gone up by 12% in the last 12 months. Manchester itself is a bit of a tough market to get into because there's so many people wanting to get into Manchester. But if you go on some of these surrounding areas, like for instance, Wigan, Bolton, houses are really cheap there as well. Manchester, in my opinion, is almost like the new London, but you can still buy houses there for below average according to the average prices in the country. Next up in number four is Grimsby. Everyone says, oh, capital appreciation in London or the South is really good, but in the North, it's really bad. It's all about the yields. Mm, not true. If you look at London, the average property in London sells for 700,000 pounds. That is an increase of 1% over the last 12 months. That's not good capital appreciation. Many parts of London have dropped over the last 12 months. Whereas Grimsby, across the whole of Grimsby, house prices have gone up in the last 12 months by 13.5%. The average house in Grimsby right now is 160,000 pounds. Very cheap, but that is going up and up and up. So that's awesome. Also with Grimsby, the average yield in Grimsby, according to Zoopla, is 7.1%. My friend, Scott Lyons and Damien Cheeseman, they bought a house in Cleethorpes for 152,000 pounds two years ago. It's now worth a quarter of a million. On top of that, 
They rent it out. It's an eight bed HMO. Right? They rent. Where, where can you buy eight bed HMOs for 152 grand? They rent it out room by room to the council as emergency accommodation. They make 12 grand a month from that one house just outside Grimsby in Keythorpe's. I love this place. This is Swansea. Recently, I went to Swansea and I did a little post in my community um, Samuel Social group. I said, hey, I'm in Swansea. Who's got properties out here? I went from property to property to property and I was absolutely mesmerized at how much money you can make just in basic buy to let. The average property value in Swansea is currently £195,000. But according to Zoopla, the average property in Swansea city centre actually sold for just a staggeringly low £147,000. In Swansea city centre, where the average rent for a two-bed apartment was £887 per month. I mean, there's a lot for 100 some of these might be auction properties. If it's auction, then it might end up selling for considerably more than 100. 99 grand, two bed terraced in Baptist Well Street, SA1. Nice little house. It was reduced October 2023. Two bedroomed house. Looks decent. Needs a little bit, little bit of a refurb. So all these houses right near that train station near the city centre, we can see there's loads of two, three beds that are on the market for around £100,000. But now, look at this. If we type in Cardiff, that's let agreed. £1,300 a month. Two bed houses. 1250, 1200 two bed terraced house. So these are the houses currently for rent, specifically in the area where we were looking at pro like this, 725. That's a house share. That's for a room. 650, that's for a room. A flat for 1300, specifically in the same area. Two bed house, 1250. 1250 for a two bed flat, 1200. 1200 look at these properties so you really can buy a house <laughs> 100 grand then rent out for a grand swansea's amazing i love swansea place number two is derby you can buy houses reasonably cheap for derby i've got a friend called nathan lamb who just bought a house for 85 grand in derby it's now worth 150 grand after you did a 15,000 pound refurb incredible derby is a great area for not just buying houses low, but also for renting really high because you can rent properties by the room in Derby and there's no planning permission restrictions. You can do it under permitted development. There's also, if the property is less than five people, you don't need to have a license. And the average room in Derby, according to Rentberry, is £634 per month which means if you've got a four bedroom property, you're going to be bringing in about two and a half thousand pounds per month from one property. Derby are bringing in Article 4 very soon. When Article 4 comes in, you cannot buy a property and rent it out as a HMO anymore unless you get planning permission and the council are probably going to say no. However, if you do it now... When they bring Article 4 in, you will have something called grandfather rights, which means that there are no more people that can come into the area and buy properties and turn them into HMOs. You can only run a HMO if you were already a HMO landlord pre-Article 4. It's going to push the value up. It's now like a limited edition house. I think Derby is a huge opportunity, which is why I put Derby at number two. And finally, number one. Number one was very difficult, but I had to say, in this occasion, this year, 2024, I'm saying Liverpool. Liverpool's a bit like Swansea in terms of the return. Same story. I could jump on the computer and bam, bam, bam. I could find ridiculously high-yielding properties on right move right now. Other than the fact that Liverpool is in England. And England is easier as an investor than Wales. The average house price in Liverpool right now is £176,000, which is considerably cheaper than average in the UK. Serviced accommodation is brilliant in Liverpool. So you can do rent to rent there. You can do serviced accommodation, flips, BRR. I helped Crept from Crept and Conan buy a house in Liverpool. You know how much he paid for it? He bought it for £43,000. 
And that was just a two-bed house, and it did need a refurb, so he spent 30 grand on it, but then pushed the value up significantly and was able to refinance and pull back the money that he'd put in. And now he rents that out as a three-bed HMO. The average price for a room in Liverpool City is £703 per month. If you can't make money in Liverpool as a property investor, then you're not a very good property investor. What I would say about Liverpool is that there is Article 4 in the centre of Liverpool. Also, there are some parts of Liverpool where the crime is quite high. So again, know your area where you're investing. But those are my top 10. Do you agree? What areas did I miss? Let me know in the comments below.